Okay. Well, we have a special guest this morning, and um, he he has to leave at 11:15. So many of you know that UK plays basketball this afternoon, and so he has to get back to. I'm just kidding about that. Actually, there's some truth to that, but he actually has to go do a funeral today, and so um, he was. Uh, he called me on Friday, and he's like, how important is it that we do this service on Sunday? And I'm like, well, I got a bunch of women making food, so what do you think? I already know the answer. Yeah, he knew the answer before he asked the question. So uh, Keith Hall is our, our state pastor, regional pastor, whatever they call him these days. Um, I met Keith when I was in eighth grade. I think I was in eighth grade. You and, and he has a younger brother, Chris, that's my age. We graduated from high school together, and many of you know um, Keith's father, David Hall, who was our state pastor, and um, I think Keith was a butcher mm -hmm. at first, right? Owens at Food Town, right? Owensville. In Owensville. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a big place. It's about as big as this room. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> anyway, but I, I you know, always make, I, I love his dad, and, and his dad is one of those things where if you'd have known him 30 years ago, you just wouldn't believe he's the same man. And I always laugh because he used to preach for what seemed like three hours. And uh, then we would do 16 or 17 verses of Just As I Am until somebody came to the altar, right? And so I always, I always joke with people, we just like hit each other, like, we're never getting out of here unless you go this week, I'll go next week. You know, so anyway. I'm really blessed that um, Keith's here and it's come out, and I really appreciate him and Elizabeth coming. and. Um, it's just, uh, this is pretty neat for me. So, Keith, I'm anxious to hear what you have to say. I serve as the, there we go. I serve as a state minister here in Mississippi. I have been in Mississippi now for 14 years. And uh, I will tell you a, a very quick story. When I... Uh, when I first moved down here, as we were leaving Illinois, where we were pastoring, it was 30 degrees and blowing snow sideways. When we moved down here, and it was like about 2 in the morning when we pulled into Philadelphia, Mississippi, it was 70 degrees in January. <laughs> and I told my wife, we're never going back north again. <laughs> And I thank the Lord that He's never called me back in order. <laughs> well, we so appreciate the work of the former state ministers uh, here in the state of Mississippi, uh, particularly the most recent one. And uh, I want to share with you a little bit. Uh, he sends to you his greetings uh, from his new home now in Newport Ritchie. Uh, Florida. I would like to tell you that he's sitting at home now and just quietly enjoying his retirement. Uh, but at present, he's attending two churches and helping another church uh, uh, secure a pastor. And uh, so he's keeping very busy at this point. Uh, so continue to lift up uh, my father, David, and his wife, Dee, as they continue to minister in the church there in uh, Florida. At this point, to being ordained as a minister of the Church of God, it's the highest possible honor. It's not to be taken lightly. And is given only after the highest possible standards have been met. Ordination is a lifetime certification, yet you're to be accountable to your fellow ministers and to the congregation that you serve. So I'm going to ask, it was the last time I get to call him this, candidate Andy, to come forward. Would you bring your wife with you as well? <laughs> Candidates of ordination must have proven themselves doctrinally sound and live lives that have been above reproach. So I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm just going to ask you to respond to those questions. 
Do you promise to remain faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ all of your life? Yes. Do you promise to remain faithful to the church of God all of your life? Yes. Do you promise to remain in ministry for the rest of your life? Yes. Do you promise to preach the divinely inspired, authoritative word of God clearly and without shame for the rest of your life? Do you promise not to preach yourself, but Jesus Christ is Lord? Yes. Do you promise to serve the churches that you will pastor with all the power that God gives you? Yes. Do you promise to do everything within the power that God gives you to win as many to God's kingdom as possible? Yes. Do you promise to remain faithful to the Bible and to the time-honored truths of the church of God? I, right? I therefore charge you based on the answers that you've given to remain faithful to your call to God and God's church and to answer that which has been given to you here this morning. So I charge you to be a minister worthy of God's call. And as a state pastor, I promise to support you and be there for you at all times through your journey right here. I'm going to ask the congregation now, if you would, to stand. <coughs> Let me talk to them for a moment. You stay right there. One of the most unique relationships, I believe, in the church is between the pastor and the congregation. He prays for you. He cares for you. He loves you. He and his wife will spend countless hours dedicating themselves wholly to see the church make a difference in their culture. Your responsibility is to see that he is the leader of this church to support, love, pray, and like I said this morning, to shine, shine, shine. So I'm going to ask you, as a congregation of the Church of God, will you, with all that you have, choose to support this pastor and to make an impact in this culture? If so, answer, we will. We will. Let's bow our heads together. Heavenly Father, we love you so much. We love the fact that where two or three are gathered in your name, you're right here with us. We love the promise that you inhabit, the praises of your people. We have a double blessing. You're, you're right here with us right now. And we thank you, dear Lord, so much for this relationship between pastor and congregation. And how, dear Father, that they will together be the light of the world right here in this community. We pray then, dear Father, that you will be with them. Yes. We thank you so much for the Blairs this morning. We thank you, dear Lord, for their sacrifice, for their willingness to serve for their willingness, dear Lord, to be used of you. And we pray, dear Father, your continued blessing upon their ministry. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. privilege to be able to present to you your certificate of ordination from the Mississippi Ministers of the Church of God.
You may be seated. You may 
Father, thank you so much for this time, and God, for these people, and uh, God, just, just the ability to come and to worship you. God, sometimes when we think about how big you are, and how awesome you are, and all the awesome things you've done in our lives, it becomes overwhelming. God, be with us as we go through the rest of our service. Let us hear from you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thing, it's another 